Bijou de Diamant, the first collection. The year was 1932, three years since life came to a standstill on Black Tuesday, the day the world was plunged into the darkness of the Great Depression. In 1932, however, there were also reminders that there is no shadow without light. The hot club de France was swinging with jazz. The first radio broadcast brought the gilded sounds of Paris's Opera Garnier into people's homes. Some 200,000 people attended the launch of the SS Normandy ocean liner. And in November, Diamond Corporation Limited had the brilliant idea of calling on the talents of a visionary woman. Not only had she brought modernism to clothing design, but she was also a gifted accessory designer who made costume jewelry that was even more beautiful than the real thing. A woman who ran her own empire, she set the course for women of her era, influencing both the way they dressed and the way they lived. In 1932, Diamond Corporation Limited chose Gabrielle Chanel to revive the world's interest in diamonds. By creating Bijoux de Diamant, the world's first high jewelry collection, she countered the ambient gloom by inspiring dreams and shining a light on beauty. Only two days after the collection's release, Diamond Corporation Limited stocks jumped in value. Gabrielle Chanel was a woman with her feet on the ground and her head in the stars. Did Mademoiselle's childhood in the Abbey of Aubazine teach her to believe in signs? The moon, stars, and the sun on the Cistercian convent's coat of arms may have sparked her love for celestial bodies. Whatever the case, it was the immensity of a Parisian summer sky streaked with stars, like so many floating diamonds, that provided the inspiration for Bijoux de Diamant, a collection that spangled women's skin and hair with stars, meteor showers, a glowing moon, and a fiery sun. Chanel designed some 50 pieces with white and yellow diamonds, set in platinum and yellow gold, to be worn both day and night. The pieces identified so far by the house patrimoine include 22 stars, comets, a moon and a sun, 16 supple ribbons, dancing fringe, airy feathers, and eight spirals, circles, squares, and crosses with pure lines. Bijoux de Diamant was an entirely new concept. Mademoiselle applied the principles of haute couture to her design for the first high jewelry collection in history. Like a fashion collection, it had a theme and was created and presented all together in the same place. This was the exact opposite of the way jewelers of the time worked. The jewelry makers of Paris's Place Vendôme were scandalized by Diamond Corporation Limited's choice of Chanel. What could be more insulting than calling on a clothing designer rather than a jeweler, a dressmaker? They joined forces to prevent Mademoiselle from making jewellery. Bijou de Diamant became known as the Chanel Affair, and Parisian jewellers demanded that her creations be dismantled and the gemstones returned. Because some pieces were sold on the first day, however, we still have some examples from the collection. One is a midnight blue velvet case containing a fragment of a starry night, the 7.8 carat diamond and platinum comet brooch glistening on a midnight blue silk sheath. Then, there is a long feather, flexible despite the weight of its many gems. The feather could have been used to fasten a coat, circle the forehead with gleaming light, or perfectly follow the curves of the shoulder. For Mademoiselle, designing jewellery was not very different from designing clothing. A diamond's perfection is enhanced by the simplicity of its setting. The allure of the gemstone is what counts. When she created Bijou de Diamant, she chose the direction of freedom, making jewellery that had no clasps, and allowed the body to move with ease. Women could decide for themselves how to wear the pieces, by combining a feather with a crescent moon, for example, or a bow with the sun, or fringe with a multitude of stars. The pieces were not designed as a set, and in another first, these were the pieces that could be adapted and transformed to be worn where and how a woman desired. A necklace, for example, could become a bracelet or a brooch. The gemstones might float on the fingers, run over the skin or wrap around the wrist, increasing the glamour of the woman who wore them. The Bijou de Diamant collection, because it was like no other, was also introduced to the world in a completely new way. Chanel, a veritable force of her time, planned something entirely different for the presentation of the collection. Since the jewels were meant to shine in high society, she created an exhibition from November 7th to 19th, preceded by a two-day private showing. The invitation, distinguished by its clean elegance, stipulated an entrance fee of 20 francs, which would be donated to the Société de la Charite Maternelle de Paris and the Assistance Privée à la Classe Moyenne, an indication of Mademoiselle's charitable inclinations. On November 5th, 
the date bearing her lucky number. Chanel welcomed guests from the art, press and social worlds to her home at 29 Rue de Faubourg Saint-Honoré in Paris, overlooking the gardens of Avenue Gabrielle, the 18th century salons of Rohan Montbasson Mansion were lit up like the cosmos. Bathed in a mysterious light, large transparent display cases stood on marble pedestals in high ceiling rooms with golden walls, shining like the sun. Surrounded by gigantic mirrors and coromandel folding screens, they contained stunning wax busts. With makeup and hairstyling by Mademoiselle herself, they looked as if they might spring into being at any moment. The jewellery, which would normally have been displayed lifelessly in glass cases, was arranged on the mannequin's busts and hands. The brilliance of the gems was reflected to infinity in the room's faceted mirrors. Artist Christian Berhard's moving illustrations show Mademoiselle carefully preparing the wax mannequins. He and John Cocteau helped Chanel set up the exhibition over the course of an enchanted evening. Surrounded by a sea of diamonds, they created a surrealistic immersion in the world of Chanel. A gifted woman who was a friend of the arts and artists, Chanel called on the great talents of her day to design this jewellery of the future. First, she reinterpreted the designs of Paul Arib, removing the clasps and making the jewellery modular. She asked filmmaker Robert Bresson to photograph five pieces for the press. They were presented in a luxurious document printed by Draeger. The photos were accompanied by a manifesto, a translation of her vision into words by one of the era's greatest artists. When she invented the very first high jewellery collection, with its bold lines, great flexibility and freedom of movement, Gabrielle Chanel made Bijou de Diamant the foundation of all Chanel jewellery, creating a precious heritage and a magnificent, unwavering source of inspiration. <laughs>